Welcome to my three-part series on my remote node red station setup. I've received a bunch of emails and questions about my remote setup, so I decided to make some videos. Hopefully this answers any questions you may have to get started. If you have additional questions, leave them in the comment section below. So part one explains the station setup and how all the radios, antenna, switches, miscellaneous devices are connected via ethernet, serial, USB, and coax. Part two explains the Node-RED dashboard and how we actually control everything remotely. Part three is I run through the programming flows and, and try and describe some of the logic on some of the flows. Now, if you're new to Node-RED and you wanna get started, I have a whole playlist on my channel to get you up and started and running Node Red on a Raspberry Pi, so go check that out. Also, there's a whole Groups IO mailing list dedicated to Node Red for Ham Radio. That's where we hang out and talk about ideas and uh, share our flows with each other. Just search Groups IO and Node Red Ham Radio, and it should be the first thing in your search bar. So uh, stick around, and we're going to get to the parts right now. Above me here is the default node red screen. Whenever we get into our node red dashboard, this is the first thing that we see. So let's kind of go over some of the, uh, the major groups here of the dashboard. So you've got up here in the upper left hand corner, you've got the drop down with the different pages. And in this banner bar, I've got some solar data that you can take a look at real fast. So it's got SFI of uh, today is 160, the A is 6, the K is 1, the uh, FOS2 is 9.5, and then here is the lightning indicator. So as of right now, there has been no lightning strikes that are less than 25 kilometers away from the station. If this would go red, what would happen is I've got a flow in here that would disconnect the antenna, so it would, it would um, remove power from the Paradan antenna disconnects, bring the station offline off of uh, the coax, and uh, then it would email us and actually send us a Discord message to say, hey, there's been lightning detected uh, close to the station. You guys uh, probably need to shut down the rest of the station. So. That is our fail-safe on making sure that even if we're away from the station and the, uh, the antennas are connected, that uh, they will be disconnected. Now, I'm looking to put some delays in there so it just doesn't totally shut off. And let's say you're operating and um, it just shuts off for no reason. And then you get the alert. So there's some more work to be done. If you program your station with node red one of the things that you'll find out is it's never done you're always making tweaks to it and then over here we've got uh, just the time in, in utc node red is put into groups and you can put uh, dashboard items into groups so i've grouped things logically that uh, i think uh, makes sense so here we've got the two post pi status and control this is the pi that runs node red okay so you can see we're pulling CPU temperature, memory use, disk space, uh, CPU utilization, and then I'm graphing the CPU temperature, and you can see that it's going up in uh, temperature because it, uh, it's a warm day today, and um, I don't think the AC is on at the, uh, the station. So then we've got a reboot button, and we've got a shutdown button, which uh, those are pretty dangerous. But then we've got the IP address of the Raspberry Pi that's at the station, and then we've got uh, the uptime counter on how long that uh, that Pi has been up. Same thing with the amp rack that is in the back of the amp rack that uh, control all of the, um, that runs sear 2 net but uh, it does not run node red for anything shack control. It runs the contest dashboard, but that's the only thing that it runs. Uh, so it does run an instance of Node Red, but we just uh, that's where we run the contest dashboard from. And again, I'm uh, taking a look at CPU temperature, memory use, disk space, and uh, CPU utilization. Graphing CPU temperature, it's got a reboot, a shutdown, it's got an address of 19, it's got an uptime of six days, 
And here I was um, doing some tests because our disk space was going crazy. So I put a graph on the disk space and that's what you see down here. Here, this group, these two groups are the DLI Web Switch Pros. And we call the main rack that has uh, the node red Raspberry Pi running it to post power. And then the amp rack, obviously we call amp rack power. So the two post has got the Dell PC, it's got the fiber router, it's got the Netgear switch, it's got uh, the Raspberry Pi that's all plugged into the DLI Web Switch Pro. And then I did have a backup Pi up there that I removed, and then I had a PoE camera that is not plugged in. The amp rack power, we've got the amp rack power in general, so one of those Astron power supplies. And then we've got Station A, which is the Kenwoods that we contest on uh, whenever we're down there locally. So we've got Station A and Station B that can be turned on through the DLI Web Switch Pro. And keep in mind, this is the, the Web Switch Pro that is wireless, along with the Raspberry Pi that is wireless in the back of the amp rack. And then we've got the Amprac Pi, which I was just talking about. And then we've got relays to turn on the, um, uh, the amps, amp A and amp B. So we've got two stations down there, station A and station B, which are identical. They're two Kenwoods. And then we've got two identical amps that um, are in the amp rack that we use for high power. Then moving on here, we've got flex power. And this is... Uh, Again, two switches in the RASP or on the, the DLI Web Switch Pro, and this is the Astron power supply that's in the base of that two post rack. So I decided to break that out. And then I've got the, the small power supply, that 60 watt power supply. That is this antenna latch that I can turn on and off. So this is the, the button that or the, the latch the switch, the relay that turns off whenever there's a lightning strike near, it will turn this latch off. And then I've got the web relay, which is that KM Tronics, and that is the flex on and off. So you can see my flex is on, the power supply is on, the antenna is latched, and this flex PTT, which is uh, another normally open uh, on the KM Tronics, and then whenever I close that, so I'll hit this button, and it will turn green, and then I have a trigger that actually, after two seconds, it turns it back on. I'm sorry, it turns it back off, and uh, so I don't have to, you know, keep hitting the uh, the PTT if I need to to um, to authenticate SmartLink. So the, keep in mind, this is not a PTT for talking. This is a PTT on the back of the Flex to authenticate SmartLink. Then I've just got some network status graphs and uh, pings going on here. I'm pinging Google, which is a uh, 14.1 uh, milliseconds. I'm pinging the, the DLI Amp Rack Web Switch Pro. Uh, I've, we've been having some issues with uh, lots of timeouts, so uh, I'm just tracking that. So here I'm just tracking the milliseconds for some of the pings. I'm saying that the internet is good. It's got a green light. And then I'm graphing those google.com host pings that uh, I'm doing uh, a manual ping up here, I think about every 15 seconds, just to um, see where we are in latency on the, uh, the internet connection. So then I've got a bunch of LEDs that I'm pinging different devices inside of the network. So the two post rack Pi, the two post DLI Web Switch Pro, the Amprac Pi, the Amprac DLI Web Switch Pro, that KM Tronics relay, my Flex, the PC, and then I was pinging the, the PoE camera, but I'm not anymore. And then here is I'm graphing the value of this Amprac DLI um, latency here. And I'm just graphing that over time. Here is a cool group that uh, a flow that I found on the internet. It basically pings out to the internet, and if it doesn't get a response, it will log that response. And then 
it will once your your WAN router comes back on, it will tell you that your WAN router is back on, but then tell you how long your your router was down for, and then put it into uh, the text box here. So I found that pretty interesting because you know if the router reboots for four hours and doesn't come back online. Uh, I'll at least get some type of an alert here to say, hey, the network was down at for four hours at three o'clock in the morning. Kind of good to know some of those those outages. And then I've got the layer, I'm sorry, the, the weather at uh, our contesting station. So currently the weather is clouds. Um, the wind speed is uh, three miles an hour. It's coming out of the north. The outside temperature is 80 degrees, humidity is uh, 41 degrees, sunrise is at 6.31 a.m., sunset is 7.38 p.m., and then it graphs the outside temperature and then gives us a well a weather LED. So if this is uh, yellow or red, uh, it grabs your attention so you can see what's going on. So this is the main screen where we turn everything on, turn everything off. That is the main screen. Moving off of this main screen, so I come up here and click the hamburger menu, and we're going to go to the antenna switch and rotator. So these are our three towers at the contest station, and these are clickable maps that you can click on where you want the rotator to rotate to, and it will rotate to that position. So these... Um, Maps, you, you can uh, generate these maps, and I'll leave a link in the description below. But this is kind of what everyone's azimuth map kind of looks like um, whenever you're first starting out. And we've kind of just kept it because uh, I think it looks cool. So we've got the current heading up here. Well, first, the, the group, I've got the tower and what antennas are on each tower. So here... On tower one, we've got an XR5, we've got an 80 meter vertical, and then we've got a 30 meter beam. So then it tells you the current heading, so it's at 77 degrees. It shows us where it's pointed, so it's kind of pointed towards the north of Africa there, and uh, kind of shows the, the uh, bandwidth of the antenna. Now, and then down here are uh, eight buttons, so we could click these buttons and instantly go to, uh, to Europe. Um, actually, I need to relabel these buttons, to tell you the truth. Uh, 90 degrees east, 180 degrees south, uh, VK, west, JA. Instant headings that uh, you can quickly click on to get your antenna at the right, lo right location. So here is the counterclockwise button. Here's the stop button and the clockwise button. So if you want to... Move it manually, you can do that. And then here you can set the heading. So you can type in a heading and the antenna will move to that location. So those are the tower one, tower two, and tower three. On tower two is the 40 meter beam, the 40 meter bobtail, and the six meter beam. And then on tower three is 160 meters, uh, the C31, which is uh, 20, 2015 and 10 and then the 80 meter north-south, and then tower th uh, four, like I said before, is always the 80 meter east-west dipole. In this block, we've got the two by six six pack, right? So remember in my last example, we switch the switch pack to switch the tower, and then we use the MCM switch to switch the antenna. So we've got the buttons uh, labeled accordingly. So radio A is this stack. Radio B is this stack. So if I want to click on, if I want to uh, tune radio A, which on the flex is antenna A, or whenever we're local, it's position A, radio A, for uh, when we're down there. And radio B is antenna two on the flex or the second Kenwood radio B whenever we're local. So if I want to click on radio A, antenna A on the flex, I just click on it and it see it grays out the other antenna 
on radio B, so you can't click it, okay? And then in red is the antenna that is selected. So if I want to click the dummy load, it's going to gray out the dummy load on radio B, so you can't select that antenna or that port on radio B because it's busy. So back to radio tower um, tower one. So then once you've got gotten done selecting the tower, then you need to come over here and select the antenna, which is located on each tower. So in tower one, we've got the XR5 beam, we've got the 80 meter vertical, we've got the 30 meter beam, and then the fourth position is not used. So right now, the XR5 beam is selected, and we're on radio A, so that would be uh, antenna A, I'm sorry, antenna one on the flex, tower one, so we'd come over here to tower one, and let's say we wanted to use the 80 meter vertical. Use the 80 meter vertical, and now we're on 80 meters, okay? Back to the XR5 beam, and that's how we switch antennas towers and rotate the rotors and keep in mind all of this stuff is flowing through let's go back to our example here all of this stuff is coming out of the raspberry pi on the network it's coming through the gigabit switch it's going over to the wireless router and then it's coming into this Pi over the wireless, coming through SEER2Net, and then going out to the correct rotor, antenna switch, or MCM switch, and telling that device to go to this position or select that antenna. And then this Raspberry Pi through node red is always polling that device saying, what is your latest status? What is your latest status? So it's always giving feedback. Even if uh, we're not doing anything, it's always polling it about once a second to say, give me your latest status. Where are you pointed? What antenna do you have selected? So that's what node red does is uh, it, uh, it's a flow based uh, programming language and it just cycles over and over and over move on here to some of the other things that I've programmed here in Node Red. This is the band activity, so it can show you quickly what bands are hot. If you go to the website DX Heat, you'll recognize this, uh, this graph here. Uh, somebody programmed this in Node Red, and you can pull this down uh, free of charge. I've got some Missouri propagation maps that uh, show from Kansas City on uh, what uh, what the propagation looks like, okay? Some solar information. So if uh, there's a solar storm or an anomaly, it's probably going to show up here. This thing pulls, I think, every 15 minutes. Here are the de-expeditions that are going on in the world, and you can click on these guys, and it'll take you to the de-expedition homepage that uh, is um, is going on. We've got your general solar data down here in the lower left-hand corner. I think probably everyone has seen that uh, this strip of uh, information. You see this on a lot of uh, ham radio websites. And then we've got a geochron that tells you where it's dark and where it's light in the world. So um, that is pretty much all of the screens. This is just a DX cluster that uh, I was, I've been working on and then the camera feed that was getting the uh, the camera uh, image before I removed the camera. So that is basically Node-RED in a nutshell.